Hey guys, uh, so here we are, match day five review. So we weren't really going to pay too much attention to international stuff. We certainly didn't trade, um, you know, knee-jerk reaction style to anything that happened or didn't happen. But as you see our dividends column up the top there, we've put our £10 on the board or so, you know. Um, so it's been pretty good to us for not doing too much around it. Obviously, the big man CR7 ran the roost last night, which was great. And... We'll go and hopefully pick up some media again today, which is sweet. So we're going to go through a wee review, guys. Um, so what I've got here is a list of all the results, okay? Now, I'm not going to go through each individual one and go, told you so, told you so, told you so, right? But if you watch the, the preview, there's some key things. If you are trading for specific matches and whatever as well, it's important that you weigh up as many things as possible. And, um, you know, some of the results will be surprising on, you know, kind of Twitter and all that kind of stuff, but a lot of it was not surprising when you you really know what the squads are involved are like, time constraints, travel arrangement, you know, these types of things, none of them were overly surprising, like Denmark and Georgia, I told you it was going to be a tough game, I kind of thought they would have probably still won, um, but a 0-0 draw, I think that ended up being things like Poland and Slovenia, Poland ended up losing, I told you, I mean, if you're expecting Lewandowski to go and run away with that. Azerbaijan and Gareth Bale, that pretty much happened if I remember rightly, Gareth Bale getting the winning goal and he did pretty well on that day and then even with Dan James and that friendly the other day, I found that absolutely mental, like De Bruyne does three assists and a goal against Scotland, where the British press you'd expect them to have fucking some sort of concern around or some sort of attention to write a column about it, but no, it was all about Dan James scoring in a friendly, which is crazy, it just shows you the power of Man United and the press I suppose. Um, but yeah, guys, overall, none of the results really surprised me too much. I'm surprised how many goals Kosovo scored against England. Um, <clears throat> but otherwise, um, yeah, we pretty much called it again, guys. So that's five match day reviews in a row where, you know, pretty much what's happened is, ha you know, we've, we've called it. So go and check out the match day six preview that went out on Monday, I think. Uh, so yeah, we're not really too, too surprised with, with many of the results. So let's go through the runners and riders, okay? So... In terms of dividends, one, this was the first uh, match day. Uh, so when it says top midfielder at the top, that's media, you know, so it was all about Mason Mount, will he get capped and that type of thing. And then it was all the Swedes, oh, it was all the, the Scandinavians really, but we had Ericsson doing, a, doing some bits. Isaac came out big time. I said on the video, I can't think of any Swedish players that are really on the platform now except for Forsberg. And then when I seen the lineup, I was like, duh, <laughs> Alexander Isaac, of course. Why did I not think of that when I was doing the review? But yeah, he did really well, and if you had him, well done to you. Um, the day after that, we had Conrad Lehmer. Now, again, if you go back and watch the the preview of this match day, I did tell you Austria were going to be the, the dark horses on that day. They could go and win some dividends, and more selfishly, I was thinking about Sabitza, but it does also mention that the whole squad is basically a Bundesliga team, you know. Um, so Conrad Lehmer went and did very well. Stefan Lehner did well, and obviously you can see the list in front of you. And then Neymar, his top forward, that's media, of course. The following day, um, Harry Kane getting his winning goal, Kingsley Coleman, Alexander Sinchenko. Alexander Sinchenko was playing like left wing uh, in that match, I think. So, again, you know, I said the same thing about Alaba. Alaba generally plays midfield for Austria. He played left wing as well. It didn't play on this match day, I don't think, from memory. I think it was the second Austria match. It might even been both. But again, Zinchenko, again, he's listed as a defender. And I had an interesting Twitter chat with somebody and they were saying that what Football Index do is they change the position for what competition they're playing in based on the Opta stuff. And what I had to explain to them, I had to say in a really nice way, like, listen mate, I'm really sorry, but I'm right on this, is it's a waterfall um, priority kind of thing. So if they have a league position on Opta, then that's the position they get accredited to. If they don't play in a PB league, then it is their international position that gets accredited to them. If they don't play international football, they don't play in a PB league, but they play in like Europa League and Champions League, then it'll go on that position, etc, etc, okay, so there's a proof in the pudding for you and you'll see Kimmich didn't change to being a midfielder over there in the national period, he was still a defender, it's a hierarchy, kind of waterfall drip down sort of thing. Uh, then I had the next day, we had Kane winning media from his performances the night before, Dennis Zakaria for Switzerland, Rodrigo Moreno for Spain and Ricardo Rodriguez for Switzerland. Winning the dividends on that day and then we had um, Map up, Map. My portfolio did pretty well. We had De Bruyne running the roost. We had Halsenberg doing really well for Germany against Northern Ireland. And then, like I was saying before, like, we're searching for these forwards, and if we see the pie there, 
Moreno and Kane are out of it. Isaac, they don't. None of them really fit that bill, certainly. But it is that the pie two thirty. Well, fair enough. Two. You know, he's not really even got the highest score, I suppose. But it is that type of forward where we know the pie is going to be in amongst it, even without goals, because of his crosses, his corners, all this type of stuff. And it's good to see him winning PB again. And then last night we had the Ronaldo show. Clement Longley, um, Barcelona defender for France, picked up some dividends. And Sancho, his game-winning goal and his performance against Kosovo, went and bagged some dividends as well. And I've been seeing a lot of Twitter stuff as well, guys, about like, oh, De Bruyne can't keep this up, and oh, this one can't keep it up, and this one's not going to win PB forever. The way the Matrix is, guys, is it's now shining a light on these players who play a certain way. You know, it's all about... I don't want to bang the same drum again too much, right? But it is all about... Um, even if you look at the dividends we've earned this season so far, you know, you, you, you see them all there yourself. Don't need me to read them out to you. But it is consistent performers just doing what they would do anyway. Obviously, we know De Bruyne's got great form now. And the Sabitzer thing, we couldn't have predicted they'd have done that in the first match day. And uh, same with like Joanne Jordan. But it's the same type of player that's constantly winning, you know? And... That's not a coincidence, you know, if you're kind of betting against this changing, you need a matrix change because it's all about the secondary key passes, it's all about accurate long balls, it's all about recovering possession, it's all about winning headers, you know, and the players that do that, a player does that or they don't, you know, like, I'm a UEFA B licensed coach and it's one of these things where players will play the way they want to and the manager, the coach is about fitting that into the system. You promote them to do things that they're good at and benefit the system you're pushing forward and you try and get them to taper in the things you don't want them to do that don't suit the system you know and that's how you get team selection and that's how you try and weigh up pros and cons of different players and different systems and different teams but these players this is the way they play and if they're starting for their team that's the system their coach wants to play and as long as their team is going to be fighting in a match or even dominant in a match that is the type of way they're going to keep playing and they're going to keep scoring high. And depending on who else is playing on that day and how well they play, they're going to keep winning dividends, guys. It's not it's not real rocket science. And I listened to um I listened to uh, the Irish podcast the other day. Yesterday I think it was with Mo and Filthy Index. Uh, really great listens. Go and check that out if you've not seen it yet. And I watched uh, just on a side note, I watched Connor's new spreadsheet video last night. That was really interesting as well. But when I was listening to this stuff, and these guys were talking about being kind of newish and this type of thing, oh, it's been getting yourself in that mindset of seeing what traders want and that type of thing. And that does come with experience, guys, you know, that's something you'll develop over time. But it's the same trends that repeat themselves, you know. And when I've built a portfolio to the situation it's at now, it's with the thought process that the next trend that's coming is quality football players. You know, as you can see, there's nothing... <clears throat> when you look at the actual fantasy strategy... There's not really, you might say Jordan, he may say Cancelo and Denier. I've bought Denier after he's done well, I didn't buy him before that. I've, he I've held him previously and it's great to see he did well. I was a wee bit annoyed I never owned him at the time. But the rest of these players, they're all household names, especially to anyone who uses Football Index. You all know who Goretzka, De Jong, Pjanic, De Bruyne, Ronaldo, Dembele, De Ligt, Ederson. You all know who these guys are. Um, and it's about understanding that. The next kind of trend, like I said, she's... In the subscriber only video a few days ago is we're searching now for that forward that's going to be like the De Bruyne's, like the Jordans, like the Lamers, like these centre mids, the Vitzels, you know, these centre mids are going to continuously rack points just because of the way they play and what the Matrix rewards. There's going to be some forwards like Messi's and Mbappe's, I think, especially Messi, that type of forward that is going to start to show itself. As the season ticks on and players hit form, you know, guys last season, we had guys like Piacek and Zapata come right out of left field. Nobody really seen it coming, especially the Piacek, and um, really shook things up. And there'll be some forwards that will have the season of their life this year that we don't know who they are yet. We might have some guesses, but um, that's the next market shift for me because we've all kind of established now, we kind of know the midfielders or the type of midfielder that is really profitable to own. And with defenders, there's just been a bit of a rebalance. So centre backs now get, I, I'd say, a fair crack of the whip against the full backs. But in terms of forwards, again, if you look at all those PB winners, it's still all the goal scorers like Ronaldo scoring three, Kane, Sancho. These guys are scoring goals. Obviously, I know Sancho's listed as a midfielder. But um, we're now, the, the market, that's what it's looking for. So it's looking for those forwards that are reliable. Five match days out of eight, 
they might score one goal on average a game. You know, they might score five over eight games or something like that, five over nine. But over those nine games, they'll get a consistent PB score of over, like, I don't know, say 180, because they're putting crosses into the box, they're playing key passes and secondary key passes and that type of thing as well. And when you think about De Bruyne, just to come back to the initial kind of thread that I'm on here, De Bruyne, like, see for all how amazing he is, he might not always get the assist, but everything goes through him. You know what I mean? I mean, you've got players like that in your portfolio who are in a team like that, who are very possession oriented, very attack minded. Same as Witzel at Dortmund, um, and what we'd expect to see from like Goretzka at um, Bayern when he comes back, because their midfield's been all over the place recently. Is it Tolisso? Is it you know different guys, Cuisance and Ronaldo? Anyway, I digress. But th these things remain constant. All all you're really then relying on is you know Man City win four one. He's going to play a big part in that, you know. But again, like I say, we're looking for the forwards that are going to be contributing with all these other things that don't include goals. So you'll come to a point, and it'll happen, I'd imagine, fairly shortly. Somebody will score two or three goals. Might be a penalty or two. And then you'll have a forward that wins best forward, who's maybe scored one goal. Maybe got an assist as well. But they've got a crazy high score because they've been dictating play, they've been dropping deep, they've been playing balls, they've been playing crosses been winning possession, they've been completing dribbles, whereas those predator strikers like your Canes, for example, your Ronaldos, they're only getting the points for the goals, whereas these people are picking up points in other areas of the pitch, and that's the next thing the market is searching for. Um, obviously, we've got the Champions League to get stuff to kick off, and again, like I've said before, if you're not holding in the Champions League players, you will regret it very quickly, because it will send people on a surge. You know, we've got a great platform at the moment, the footy's doing really well, and um, there'll be a lot of money swishing about. People are uncertain of where they want to put their money next. And Champions League, trust me, it, it grabs so much attention, so much focus. Because what you've got to think as well is as much as you can look at your portfolio and go, oh, do you know what? I really want to buy some, I really want to buy some, uh, let's say, Habib Diallo, right? Just as an example. How many Mets games are you going to watch? I know I'm going to watch zero. I'll maybe watch some highlights. But I'm never going to watch Mets play. A full match, 90 minutes. Very unlikely if I do. But I can promise you something. I'll watch a lot of Barca in the Champions League. I'll be watching a lot of Bayern Munich, Juventus, Real Madrid. I'll be watching all these guys in the Champions League midweek. You know, we're all going to... And the more eyes that are on the football match, the more eyes are on your perspective hold, your perspective player. You know, so when I see like... Um, my Frankie de Jong and my Marcus de Ligt, and my Matthias de Ligt. Um, backwards, I, I don't care. Like, I really do not care that they're down a fiver each because I know as soon as Champions League comes back and they play good and their, their scores are, I've been happy with, you know, but as soon as more eyes come on them and they get settled in, it, it, all this subsidiary stuff around that new club, whatever. But once the Champions League kicks off, these Champions League players, their premium will come back and uh, we'll do some damage. So this has been the Match Day 5 preview, guys. International stuff, if you traded on the back of it, for it, for the players like Isaac and Lamar and whoever else, we had Icelandic guys that were 12p and whatever. I hope you did well, I hope you made profit. I've sat back, and because the strategy, the portfolio as a whole, is built is to be robust, I've done pretty well with being dormant this whole time. So I hope um, you did well. But I hope equally you can take some lessons out of that. Maybe you think to yourself, do you know what? This international break, I did too much work or I did not enough work on my portfolio at whatever stages. And you learn from that. Because this is, any of the videos, guys, I'll say it again, it's never about me saying everything I'm doing is right and everything you're doing will be right if you do what I do. It's just about, listen, this is what's worked for me. Can you take that and adapt it and adopt it? into what you're doing and oh do you know what well now that I've seen this I might actually take a little leaf out of that I'm not going to do everything the guy says but that little bit I like and that little bit I like and then if that makes you an extra 5% or something I'm happy you're happy we're all winners if you're new around here guys like share subscribe retweet all that good stuff stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one take care bye bye